let's get started. For this tutorial, we're just gonna go over the interface of Adobe Illustrator, some of the basics. So find your Adobe Illustrator program and hit open. So you're gonna be brought to a window, probably has some demonstrations on how to use the product. Mine just looks different because I use it almost every day. So we're gonna go to new file and let's make an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, very common size. So eight and a half inches, make sure it's in inches here. If it's not, click inches. That can always be changed later, 11. And then we'll talk about these features in other assignments. Hit create, and here's our main interface. So at the top, we just have our main application bar, which allows us to close or switch between workspaces. Below that is our menu bar and control panel. To the left is what you'll use quite a bit is the toolbar. And then to the right over here is our collapsible toolbar settings. So if these are the tools, these are the tool settings. Then below is our main adjustment panel for zooming in or artboard. If your interface looks a little different, say here, you can always adjust using these little arrows in the left corner. So your tools might look like that. Just go ahead, click that if you like the two columns. I like the two columns, but it's up to you. Same thing over here. So you might have some panels already showing. You can just toggle those either here, or you can even be selective by opening up the window panel here in our application bar. If you're using a PC, it's gonna look slightly different. Just keep that in mind. My favorite part of Illustrator is you're not limited to this white artboard. So this is our artboard here. This is our final print size or image size. As you can see, I went over to the artboard tool here and I could actually customize that size using the click and drag feature or an actual adjustment here. So say I needed to change the print size, I could go and change it like so. I'm gonna undo that by going to edit undo or command Z or control Z if you are using a PC. So like I said, favorite part is I'm not limited to this space because I can work all around this space. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes you're working on really complicated illustrations and you need the excess space to develop or save stuff. You can put imagery for inspiration or texts and so forth. So let me open one to, as an example. So I'm gonna go to file, open, and let's see. I'll do a project that I did for a player named Carly Lloyd. So I'm gonna open up two files. I'm gonna open up the nice file that was sent to the printer, which is the RTP file. As you can see, it looks really nice. It's final. Now, that's not what it looked like when I was making it. When I was making it, this is what it looked like when I was making it. And it's actually kind of clean here. Um, but essentially I have the main file here. I have the same exact artboard size to the right. These were my guides to make sure that all the graphics were lining up in the same space around this circle design. Then I even had all my colors easily accessible, all the type I was considering. And this was like one of the first tests with how I would arrange the image, as you can see, Carly even changed quite a bit with the final product and then some other assets. As you can see, I was able to use the entire space to work on this project. But of course, this what was sent to the printer. All right, so let's go back. So as you can see in Illustrator, I'm working in vector. So vector meaning shapes that can be sized at any size and they maintain the look. We're not using photo or anything in Illustrator. Now photos can be brought in, but you can't edit photo because it's made of pixels. Pixels we can adjust in Adobe Photoshop, which will be the next program. And what you see when I zoom in are points. So this object is made of a ton of points and the more points you have, the more detailed and descriptive your image can be. So let's go back. To make those points, we start out with either a pen tool or a shape tool like the rectangular tool, and we'll start here. 
So if I want to adjust this by moving it around or resizing it, I'm going to actually use one of the main tools you're going to use probably the whole time, which is the selection tool here. So it allows you to select entire objects and move them around. It even allows you to scale them by clicking a corner or rotating, which is nice. Now, if I want to keep the same constraints, I'm going to hold like a shift here and it'll keep the constraints. So hold shift to do so. Now say I want to customize this and add points or adjust those points, I'm going to use the direct selection tool which grabs specific anchor points. Yes, you can move it around, which is nice, but the main goal here is to actually adjust the anchors. So by clicking on an anchor, you can click and drag to move it round it, adjust it, and so forth. So now you can actually make a custom shape like so. So like I said, these are your main tools that you can use all the time. Now, I briefly showed you the rectangle tool. So if you click and hold, you can actually see there's more shapes you can build. So the ellipse tool, polygon tool, the star tool, and a line tool. Now what's cool about this, so I'm going to click them on, I'm actually going to resize them by holding shift, drag them on my board, just put them wherever I want. Because we'll adjust those in a second. Now the neat thing is, is I can actually customize these shapes even more. So when I click and hold, say I want to create a star, but maybe I want to create a triangle from the star. Now I can obviously create a triangle using my pen tool, which I'll show you in a second, but say I wanted to make it uniform. Instead of clicking and dragging, I'm going to just click. You'll notice here it asks me how many points do I want. So triangle has three points. And there we go. So a neat little trick. Same can be for a star. So say I wanted to a, you know, star with 10 points. Boom, same thing. So it's a really cool trick. So again, by doing so, click the star, and then you can go 30 points, like that. You can even customize the depth. So let's click this, and we'll do, a, you know, 0 0.05, then 0.25 allows you to change the depth of that star. And so now we've got some really cool shapes. At any point, if I'm deleting or undoing something, I'm going up here and I'm going to edit, undo, move. You'll see to the right is the keyboard shortcut. So for me, it's Command Z. So I'm just gonna Command Z or backspace to delete it. So let's just build, same with the polygon, let's build 10 sided polygon, yeah, and I'm just going to resize that. Now if I want to create more customized shapes, I recommend the pen tool. Now the pen tool is a very difficult tool to use in the beginning. So I always start with shapes as much as I can. You'll see that in the next tutorial, but the pen tool is nice because you can get really customized shapes that you can't get with the shape tool. So not only can you build stuff with the pen tool, but you can actually add or remove points. Remember to adjust the point, you just use your direct selection tool, but say you need more points. It's a shortcut, but you can hit up the plus symbol and it actually allows you to add more points to your shape. And the minus symbol actually allows you to take away those points. So say you wanted to make a rocket from a star, easy. Now, if you forget the keyboard shortcut, go to the pen tool. Now it's usually in pen tool, but because your program's new, you might have to add it. So down here in the three dot menu, it's the edit toolbar. 
And this is where you can actually add those plus and minus points, which are called the add anchor point tool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But if you have the keyboard shortcut memorized, you don't really need it. But what's nice is it always shows the keyboard shortcut to the right. So if you forget. So moving on down, there's a few things I don't use quite often in my tutorials, but it's important to note. So here's the curvature tool, which allows you to create points and then adjust a curve. So it's a really cool tool for curves, but you can also use this with the pen tool as well. There might be a couple things I don't often use just for personal preference, but I will be sure to include in these tutorials. So again, moving down is the paintbrush tool, which is a really cool customized tool in which you can use brushes created or found to create shapes. They're really great for getting gestural qualities to the marks. As you can see, once you've done that, you then get a path that has all these points that then can be customized, which is really, really cool. And moving down now is our type tool. So you're going to use this a lot too, which is the type tool here. And so type tool and to the right, you'll notice it opened up the character panel. So in the character panel, you'll notice it's here and it's here. Sometimes it disappears. If it does, you can always go to window type character. And in that you can actually adjust the type as well as some of the type settings. And we'll go over that in our second assignment. This is a really cool tool, which is some of the attribute edits. So in this, you can rotate it. You'll notice though, I can always rotate it without having to actually use this tool, but there's a couple things that allow you to customize like the shear tool, which you can actually move it and customize the shape. It's great for adding a slight diagonal to the shape. And the reflect tool, like so. A quick side note is when I'm editing anything that isn't activated by the selection or direct selection tool, I must go back to the selection tool in order to grab something else as you can see here. So if I skew this, I must go back to the selection tool. Now to increase my efficiency, I'm using a shortcut. So if I'm here and I'm editing, I'm going to hit V. And as you can see, I'm now in my selection tool mode. Now to also increase my efficiency, say I want to edit a point, I'm going to select A and that's going to allow me to direct select a point there. These are probably the two most important keyboard shortcuts. Well, maybe and command Z too, but <laughs> three, the most three most important shortcuts you can use in Adobe Illustrator. Moving down again, we have our eraser tool and our scissor tool. This allows you to make adjustments like erasing parts of the path or cutting parts of the path. So one of my favorite tools is the shape builder tool. You'll notice I have a lot of favorite tools. <laughs> the shape builder tool allows you to add, remove, or combine shapes together. So say I wanted to remove this shape from this shape. I can select both, use my shape builder tool, click this and this, and you'll notice now this shape has been removed. Really neat. You can actually combine two. So again, clicking and dragging. Now, if it's not selected, it won't let me do it. So I must have both objects selected. And if I click and drag, it now combines those shapes together. It's a really neat, quick tool. We'll also go over the Pathfinder tool, which allows you to do the same thing. So again, really intuitive, really neat. Below that is our gradient tool, which allows you to assign gradients in the directions you want to see them. Click the shape you want to add a gradient tool and you can customize the gradient. Now you're not stuck with 
the black and white gradient, you can actually go to the window panel here and open up the gradient panel and assign a gradient. We'll explore gradients fully in our first assignment. Let's just quickly create our gradient. There's other ways in which you can make gradients. This is just one way. That's what's cool about Illustrator is there's more than one way to do something. One of my favorite, favorite tools <laughs> is this, which is our eyedropper tool. So if I wanted to sample color or even an attribute and use it again, I can. Like it says here, you can copy and apply an appearance attributes between objects. So let's create another shape and let's assign a color to it. Let's, let's maybe remove the gradient for now. So it's got a red shape. And let's even assign a stroke to it. So red shape, black stroke. So say I make another object here. And I want to use that same attribute. I just use my eyedropper tool, select, and it creates the exact same appearance. The same can be said for typography. So up here, I change the type. No matter what, so it can be small, tiny. If I use my eyedropper tool, same exact look. Really fast way in which you make your designs. And that's what I used actually in this design. And that's actually what I used here. So um, instead of making swatches, whenever I had a shape, I could just sample this color box and quickly change my colors. Just was a faster way of working. Moving down is another tool I don't often use, but it is really cool. It allows you to adjust strokes, which is really super cool. The blend tool here, which allows you to create custom blends. And this tool is really cool because you can blend things. So you can actually grab objects and blend them together, which is really neat. So I'll show that here. and you can customize those blends. Now, other ways in which you can do this is actually going to blend and making blends like that. This will become easier to work with in our first assignment. Wrapping up our tool panel here, some really important ones like the artboard tool. Again, this allows you to create more artboards. You must have this selected in order to make new artboards or to adjust that artboard. Here's our couple zoom tools and the hand tool. The hand tool is really nice because it allows you to move around easily. Now you can also use the space bar for doing the same thing. Now one of the most common areas where uh, confusion occurs is this panel here. So when you have a shape, you can assign a stroke and a fill to it. So the flat shape here is the fill. So I can actually fill it with a color. This black is actually the stroke around it, which I can have or I can even remove. Big secret is I don't like to add a lot of strokes to objects. So it's kind of a me thing, but if it's a shape, doesn't really need to have a stroke um, unless visibility is an issue, but just, just a little secret there. <laughs> You'll hear that from me quite a bit. Um, now, if you want to switch that, you can do a quick switch here. And then the default is just the black and white fill. Now below is you can also switch between none, gradient, and so forth. And then this allows you to just adjust the arrangements and then changing the screen mode. And then down here are some other things which you can add which we'll go over later when they're needed. So some of the things might be like typing on a path or using some of our puppet warp tools, which is actually cool. I'm gonna go ahead and add that now. 
So the puppet warp tool is pretty neat because you can actually add points and warp an object based on those points. Pretty cool. But it's kind of advanced, don't worry about using it right now. So now let's work on the tool settings panel, these ones over here. So as you can see, the default ones are have opened up to this. I don't really need to use many of these panels. So let's actually go to window workspace and let's just go to typography. As you can see, the workspace changes depending on what you set it to. Let's go to essentials. Now, as you can see here, the essentials just opens up a couple. We're going to actually customize this workspace. So I'm going to delete libraries. I'm going to delete properties and I'm going to delete comments and let's open up some of the important panels. So I'm going to go one through some of these and just show you the ones you're going to use quite a bit. So going from the bottom, let's grab swatches. That'll be your color panel. You're going to go with stroke. And here you'll notice it only has the point. So let's go show options. And now you can see there's a lot of customizable features. We're going to go to color. And as you can see, if you click and drag them, they'll nest right into each other. If you like a nice organized space, uh, gradient, if you, we're not going to use this all the time, but it's good to have. I might hide options and just show the gradient panel like that for now, since it's not going to be very commonly used. Let's go up to brushes, align. And in this align tool is also the pathfinder. I'm going to actually click and drag and make my own window. And then lastly, and I'm sure I'm missing a few, is my type panel. And I'm just going to open up the character panel here. And so, and of course, I can always add more once I remember. And then I'm just going to click and drag this to the right and make it organized. There we go. They weren't nested yet and now they're nested. Now I don't want to have to always make these windows constantly. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to window workspace and I'm going to go to new workspace and I'm going to type in whatever I want to do. So I'm just going to type in this course and then now, so say I went to this workspace and Somehow I was like, oh, something happened. I can go to workspace and voila, my nice clean workspace is back. Lastly, let's just go over some of the options up here. So file is all about saving and exporting or importing objects. So one of the most common things you'll use is of course the save, save constantly, by the way, always save your work and placing and exporting. So placing allows you to import stuff. So if you've never used Adobe before, they like to use the word place and that just allows you to import imagery right here. Now, if you want to open a file, that's different. It's going to open up a different file completely. And of course, save, save your work often and save it appropriately. So usually the name of whatever the project is, and the state. So if this is, you know, design like that, and hit save. Edit allows you to copy, paste, and change certain settings. Object, so with, the, with an object actually selected, that's how it works. This allows you to customize all the attributes, including changing the path, um, Blending, adding perspective, painting, creating shapes, customizing gradients here. And don't worry, we'll go over all this as needed. Up here is type. So this just allows you to customize some type. Same that you can do in here. Select the select button 
allows you to deselect or uh, invert a selection, as well as select similar objects that look the same. View allows you to adjust how you see your workspace and add any guides or grids. So like show grid. Unfortunately, you can't undo it, so you just have to hide the grid. Back at the window panel allows you to add those settings. And then help is great, because if you forget where something is, like I always forget where the mask tool is. So I always type in mask, clipping mask, make, things like that. And there we go. So that's just our basic Adobe Illustrator interface overview. In our next video, we'll create our first designs.